Cheers. I've been drinking. I've been drinking. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Pretty Girls Club with my very special guest, Mr. Shock. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Shaktiya Subramaniam. Please don't dox me. <laughs> he lives in Block. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I didn't even say a fake number, I said the real one. Anyways, okay, so. So today we have decided to do our first ever podcast episode together because it is our third year anniversary. Who should think the guts? It's fireworks. Sorry, la, wrong sound. Sorry, sorry. Okay, yeah. So, so anyways, track and I turned three, so we decided that we're just a three-year-old baby. <laughs> we decided to, I decided. That I wanted she to do. decided. <laughs> but I got consent. Yes. I wanted to, uh, so I thought it would be really fun if we did a podcast episode together where um, Kai Ying is obviously behind the camera, so she prepared a bunch of fun questions for us to play like a how well do we know each other type of uh, trivia game. And to just have fun on camera and finally do an episode together. So, yes, thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me. So. The team of the Pretty Girls Club. Singapore's premier podcast. Hey, top la, top la, wrong la, top. Oh, yeah. Singapore's top podcast channel. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. So, I don't know if you've realised, but we are wearing, we're wearing, <laughs> we're wearing matchy outfits. <laughs> so, I just wanted to wear my home clothes. And then Shark said he would join me in solidarity. So Because I was wearing my home. outside clothes. Yes, you. So, anyway. <laughs> I don't like bubble tea, but I have this t-shirt. And Shark's wearing my bubble tea t-shirt. Correct. It's very comfortable. I It's not like I like bubble tea. I I don't hate bubble tea. I just stopped drinking caffeine. Mm. Yeah. So it's tricky. It's tricky. Anyway, yes. how did we meet? Yes, okay, let's start. How did we meet? Uh we met on a panel at Singapore Writers Festival in twenty seventeen. Uh we showed up at the panel. Yeah. We did the panel and then at the end of the panel, both of us super awkward. It's like hi, hi, <laughs> hi, hi. And then after that it's like, Oh yeah, yeah, okay, I yeah, I follow you on Instagram. It's like, Oh yeah, yeah, I'll follow you now. Because she had no idea who I was. That's fake then, news, eh, fake news. You really anyhow don't know how to spread this kind of thing, man. <laughs> Later, okay. Imagine my podcast can't pop my <laughs> for saying the story wrong. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's funny, yeah. But okay, so that that part is not a lie. Like we did meet we did like meet in person for the first time on Singapore Writers Fest when we were on the same panel but we already knew of each other before that because we kept matching on dating apps for many <laughs> many months and I kept deleting the apps and getting back on it and we still would match so because Shark just was on it on the same profile but I kept deleting I mean like, I barely it. use my phone la, and then whenever I go in it's just like oh she's back <laughs> <laughs> So every time we, we had a conversation on any of the dating apps, it was always very pleasant, but it never amounted to a meeting. So we never like set a date or intentionally met until... And then because of Writers Fest, we, we met live in person. So it was a little bit awkward. Hence the hi, hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I didn't, I didn't really meet a lot of people on the app. Mm. Like I would talk and then I just got... Because like, I really don't use my phone. Mm. As, like I don't use my phone now. Yeah. But back then, I really didn't use my phone. Yeah. And like, whenever I was online, I'd be like, oh, hey, yeah, cool, what's up? Hey, blah, blah, blah. And then after that, I forget I have a phone for like maybe a couple of months and I come back and I feel like shit. And then I'm like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> 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 I've gone. Because I mean, life at the time was very chaotic for me mm. and I focused on that more than... Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, but... um. That was in 2017 when we actually met in person. So I guess that's when we actually got acquainted. And then since from 2017 all the way till 2020, we did bump into each other at different like... Um, we would be at the same gigs, the same shows, or Shark would be playing, and then I'll just be at the same bar. So we did bump into each other many times. For the people that don't know, I play music. Oh yes, Shark plays music. Yeah. Shark is an extremely talented musician. Think about stop musician. <laughs> I don't know about I musician. I am allowed to give this kind of credential. Sure, but... But facts, factually, <laughs> I am only a very good singer. I'm not the best. I'm on my way. There are better singers, but to all of them, watch out. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Anyways. So yeah, Shark plays music pretty well. <laughs> and we did bump each other at a bunch of different bars, like wherever he was playing. And then we, because we already got acquainted at Singapore Writers' Fest, we did actually like, 
say we will say hi lah. Every time we see each other, we'll say hi. Sometimes I will know mutual friends, and then we'll have like awkward small talk. But we never intentionally met. Like we never set a date to be like, oh, let's actually go out. Mm. Until this happened in 2020. Um, my. My sperm donor passed away. Ew, say that. Okay, both our dads passed away within <coughs> two months of each other in 2020, and it was it was a stressful time. It was yeah. a very stressful time because I had just. Yeah, I'm not going to go into details. Yeah. You have to get to know me, and then I'll tell you what actually happened. But my right. dad passed away, uh, and then and in the same month as like my mom's yeah. birthday, my sister's birthday, my birthday. We are all bought like my dad's birthday. We are, we are all all our birthdays are very close. Mm. And then he passed away in the middle of the month. And I was just like, Sh- uh, "Can I swear on this podcast?" Yeah, why not? I was like, "Shit, life is just when you think it's getting better, it will challenge you." Mm. Like that's how I saw it. I didn't think of it as like, "Wow, now it's worse." No, it was just another thing yeah. that is happening that is challenging my growth. And I feel like I grew through it as well as I possibly could, um, but already I was just coming off of like a weird thing, and then this happened, and then I really didn't know what to do. I was I was very like the ground from the rug from under me got pulled, but also I was very relieved. Hmm. Is yeah. No, it's very it's very weird to explain it without context. But yeah. I feel like in general, for most <coughs> for most people, like. Like our age at that point, like I would say youngish adults, you know, for us to experience have a weird, a strange relationship with a parent, and then for something really like morbid to happen, in a very weird like, it's there's no proper closure around it. Also, it just it's very unsettling, and then you can't really explain it because you feel a wave of so many different emotions, and obviously, it's essentially all just under under the umbrella of grief. But it's so many different emotions under grief, all at the same time, all the different stages, and dif- and added stages because of the 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 kind of relationship the kind of toxic relationship that we both I guess had with our own respective dads so toxic non-toxic I mean it was uh, it was it some, all of it it was all of it yeah some level of toxic but it was yeah. just just very confusing all around so when when that happened in July 2020 uh, my dad <laughs> I literally started with this episode don't dox me you just said <laughs> I literally said my mother my sister <laughs> Myself, my father. Yeah, see, everybody gonna <sighs> dox you here. <laughs> but yeah, so two months after that, my dad passed away, and it was also like, it was it was a lot, very weird. But anyways, uh, when Chuck found out that my dad passed, we were already like following each other on Instagram at that point. At that point, and I did briefly like post about it. So when he found out, he DM'd me. He slid in my DMs, and he said he sent his condolences, and then. No, because I didn't honestly at the time I didn't know anybody that was going through the same stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I just he was really just like uh, I'm so sorry this happened to you. Mm. I am very overwhelmed. I can really imagine how overwhelmed you are. Mm. Um, I hope you're well, lah. Uh. I yeah. was I was really like just like please take care of yourself. Mm. Like I, if you need anything, please let me know. I'm very happy to. I know we don't talk to each other, but it was really just the fact that you were experiencing the same pain, mm. or or rather similar pain to what I was experiencing, and and. I don't want anyone to feel that, and, and I feel like shit that you are feeling that, mm. and I want to help. Yeah. If uh, whatever way I can, if it's like, just to hang out for a little while, if it's just to, if you, I don't know lah, anything. Yeah. Yeah. No lah, but in that moment also, because it was so dis disorienting when that happened, that I was just like, it was nice to have someone to speak to because I was also dealing with my own like, no one around me could relate to what a weird situation this was. And I was very grateful, uh, obviously, that Chuck reached out because we ended up finally deciding, finding, finally deciding to intentionally meet. So I was like, yeah, we should maybe we should finally grab that drink that we keep talking about. So we were not free any other day of the week or like the un- unforeseeable, unforeseeable, the foreseeable future, foreseeable the future. foreseeable future. <laughs> so we decided to to just meet the next day because we both were free the next day. So it was the most random thing. We planned to meet the the immediate next day, and we. Both went into it just thinking, okay, we're just gonna get to finally hang out and talk and just, and just get to know each other and just be there for each other in the most like wholesome way. We both did not think it was a date, and we were telling our own respective groups of friends that we were gonna meet each other, but 
neither of us explained it like it was a date or really thought it was. So. I really I really told everybody, no, y'all <laughs> y'all need to calm down. I'm meeting somebody else that is going through what I'm going through and we're gonna talk and then that's it. And I'm just like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> then I'm just like I have text messages from that same night where I was texting Wisan. I was like, Wisan was still working with me at that point and I was texting him to say, Okay, I'm going for this meeting and I'm going for spin class and then after that I'm gonna meet I'm gonna meet this guy, I'm not sure if you know him, and then I think I mentioned your name and then Wisan's like, Oh, okay, like have a good night. Like it was just the most the most wholesome random thing and I think going into it without it being the pressure of a date helped a lot because it was easily one of the best dates I ever had now in hindsight. I'm calling a date, huh? Yeah, la, look where we are now, right? It's been three years <laughs> and then now we're holding hands, so... <laughs> From anyway. last time, long time ago. <laughs> what is my shots, huh? Okay, yeah. so uh, now that you guys know the story of our lives... Can I hit you with a random fun fact? Yes, why not? How long do you think it will take to walk from one end of the Great Wall of China to the other? Uh, seven weeks. Yeah. I, just, I, I hate that Shark actually told me this before. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot remember. Oh, you don't listen when I talk. I huh? try. I try my best, but I don't really care about the Great Wall of China. <laughs> no, but to me, it was like, it was... Mind-blowing. It, I it was, it was. Two months. No, no. That's, that's one week more than seven 17, weeks. I think. 17 months? Yeah. If you walk from one end, that's how that's how big the Great Wall of China is, okay? It might be 19 months, but I know it's double digit. Wow, you can give birth to two children, eh? Wow, busy. <laughs> wow, busy. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for the random fun fact that nobody asked for. I will have a couple more. <laughs> okay, so now that we have done the content. 17, right? 18 months. Well, you can fully give birth to two kids. Now that we've gotten the context and introductions out of the way, so you know Shark's not a stranger in my bedroom, let's now play the game that we're all here to play. <laughs> How well do we know each other? So Kaying has prepared a bunch of questions she's going to ask us, and we're not going to like write our answers down or anything. We will just say it out loud for all the people listening to this. And the podcast. forfeit. Oh, yes. We need oh. to have a forfeit. Okay. <laughs> I will load the gun. We have a Nerf gun. Let me just... Show and... You. you heard that? Oh, that was pretty loud. Yeah. Sorry. As somebody that has been on the receiving end of that bullet... Hey, honestly, not by me. Shout out to our best friend, I mean, He constantly will whip out Nerf gun and shoot <laughs> shark in the head. Even in front of his whole family. Like, <laughs> really just... Like, wilding. I mean, always wilding with a Nerf gun. And and shark just bought him a Nerf gun with 50 freaking bullets. I was like, you like to shoot, shoot lah. Shoot. Yeah, yeah shoot. so I don't anyhow shoot this Nerf gun, okay? But anyways, today I will because we're playing this How Well We Know Each Other game and the forfeit will be that we the, the winner will get to shoot the loser in the head with his Nerf gun. Yeah, so you better watch the video. <laughs> Threaten. Okay, let's do it. Can you hit us with the first question? Hit us with the first questions, yeah. Mm. Since it's the Third year anniversary. How right. long have you guys been dating as of today to the day? Ken. Okay. Three, two, one. Two, two years, years, eleven months. Sixty-two days. Oh wow! I didn't hear the question. No, no, correct, correct. Two years, I, I eleven months, 11 months and, months and twenty-six then. days. Yeah, two years, three hundred and sixty-two days. You sure or not? This year got leap year, you know. <laughs> I never think about this kind of thing man. But anyways <laughs> Wait so who's wrong? Me yeah. yeah Actually I don't know If this year is a leap year Anyhow Fake news yeah. Yeah. Actually I never count So I guess you're both right yeah. <laughs> Next question please What Is A nickname That you call each other There's only one Murti <laughs> Actually there's a there's, I have two you only have one. I got a few. Uh... No. Okay, okay, okay. Say one. Okay, I'll say I'll say the one that I. Do you all call each other the same thing or no? Yes. yes. So the one that you call the same thing. You want to oh, we want to say the same thing. Yeah, I will say the same thing. Then I'll say the thing that she calls me. Oh, okay. One, two, three. But the thing that that uh she calls me that is extra is ass crack Janagi. I I don't know why. But it is a it's a regular occurrence, <laughs> and every time she calls me ass crack Janagi, I his loins light up on fire. <laughs> sure, 
<laughs> yeah, okay. Eh, hey, you know what I thought you were going to say, not? <laughs> what? So sad. I, I genuinely call him something else that... Babo? No, I always say my sweetie. Oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> I always say, okay, <laughs> goodnight, my sweetie. I always do that. And then, like, now you ruined it by telling people what I truly say in the comfort of my own home. Facts is facts. Like, the first time it happened, right? Wow, Shark lost his mind. Yeah. I like, literally... He was, he was just standing in my kitchen watching dishes. So. <laughs> and then I just walking around the house like, hey, ask crack, Janagi. <laughs> and then I just, like, I, I was washing dishes and then I just stopped for a while just like, Whoa, whoa, where is this coming from? Yeah. And then her mom was there also. <laughs> and her mom just not phased. She wasn't phased at all. Yeah. She just doing her own thing. They're just like... <laughs> is this Auntie? normal in my household? Yes, it is. She, do you hear what she called me? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what, you snitched, yeah? But, no, but this is what happened. What? Yeah, but anyways, why do we call each other Bab? I see Shark started it. I've always wanted to call someone Bab. <laughs> okay, and that someone's me. Because <laughs> Bab is like bubbly, you know? <laughs> it's like bubbly it's like it's like uh, oh that was Bubbasaur Bubblicious <laughs> okay. Bubbasaur I don't know I like Pokemon but like not that much next question <laughs> <laughs> who is most likely to say sorry first uh, uh, well this kind of thing very hard to say because generic, generic, like no there's no generic in this I feel uh-huh. I feel like both of us would say sorry if we are wrong yeah so that's what I mean by... Okay, I guess if we are both in the wrong, then who says sorry first, right? That makes mm. more sense. Um, Don't say first. One, two, three. Me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, okay, no, but the thing is, I'm, I'm saying me because I can imagine it like... Oh, it's tricky though. It's very tricky. Okay, this one really need context, but I yeah. think we both... Okay, can you build context? Can yeah, you build oh my context? god, yeah, give us a fake situation. Yeah, please, please. Okay, 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 I come up with the situation. Okay, can, can. Okay, we are both meeting... Uh, we are both meeting the President of the United Nations. Is that a thing? I don't know. Let's make okay. it a thing. Let's, it's a thing, okay? okay President can. of the United Nations. Yeah. We go for the dinner, we're all having fun, whatever. And then I'm just like, I want to go and say, Hello. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Hello, President of the United Nations. Okay. And then I I I put my hand out to shake and then they do like a vanakam. And then I just like this is a very bad analogy. I don't know where's the tension point. <laughs> okay, okay, let me and then, <laughs> and then I step in and I'm like, so sorry, President of the United Nations. I don't know what's wrong with my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's me. Yeah, no, I feel like we both we both are very quick to apologize. I accidentally start a food fight. I accidentally start a food fight. Yeah, you definitely won't say sorry until you have enough fun. <laughs> <laughs> After you have it way too much fun, this food, and then you uh, okay, sorry, sorry. It's correct, la, it's correct. Yeah, okay, next. What is the first thing, or one of the first things, you told your friends about each other? <laughs> I This one, I don't need to think. This one, I, I believe until today. Uh, that... When I met Pretty, I remember within the first month, like I was meeting when I met my friends and stuff like that. I was just like, hey, you. I thought you said that was not date. No, no, you keep seeing this person. Like, what's going on? Now I, I remember like just looking at them. I never blink, and I just like, dude, this this girl special. And then everybody just like special how? Hey, explain lah. And I just like, I cannot lah, dude. Not yet, not yet. When I have the vocabulary, I tell you, but. Something is happening here that I don't understand, but I like, and I love, and and I need to see it through. Oh. You no, know, really, really. You can ask. You can ask. I mean, you can ask. Like, yeah. He's just gonna shoot you with a nerf gun. He will. Like, you wanna answer this kind of question? Well, yeah, he will. <laughs> <laughs> he will answer if I ask. Actually. <laughs> yeah, he will. Um. Wow. Well, okay. I think the first few things. Okay, funnily enough, I remember something that I told a friend when I met Shark on da- on dating apps before. Like, not when we started going out. But I remember telling one of my friends that, like, this is... This conversation or this person is damn different. And I've never spoken to someone, like, through a dating I've never met someone this genuine. So I remember that word came up. And I remember thinking, like, not gonna lie, this one a bit loser. But I did feel a bit, like, Every time we did speak or match on dating apps and then 
when it was just m- the months of like me not going on the apps or Shark not going on the apps and then we just didn't talk for months on end and if I did try to reach out and if like there was no response or anything I did feel very like did I just like <laughs> did I just like completely F this up and I oh my god is this why Katy Perry wrote the song the one that got away but that's how I felt I felt like that a little bit and I always I only had extremely nice things to say and I always said like it felt very different and I guess special special is is along the same lines of that lah like it just felt very refreshing very different and very very unique like special yeah it's special for me it was the fact that you understood the nuances of like of like being brown of like of I come from the circle of Singapore that usually gets swept away I'm lucky enough to be where I am because I have a bit of talent. I have I work damn hard on my talent. And so I have I have a unique perspective. I have but really I come from nothing. And I'm trying to make something of the nothing. If that makes sense. And so because of that, I have seen a lot of stuff that the average person will not believe, but I didn't have to explain it to her. Like she, she already understood it. Usually, when I talk to people, like I have to convince them that these things are happening. And and to yeah. me, that yeah, and and to me, that was that was like, damn, someone gets it. Yeah, and, and I think I felt that way too. With like even just when we talked about our own like upbringing, family background, especially, it felt so like, wow, eh, I'm finally speaking to someone who there's absolutely no judgment here, and this person completely gets me, and I did feel that too on the first date. It was a day. <laughs> okay, it was a day. Okay, next question. Who is most likely to get lost when you go on a road trip together? <laughs> Please. So I don't need to think. One, two, three. Pretty. Me. <laughs> I am damn good with directions. Wow, my, my, sense, my sense of direction, very bad. We have literally gotten into arguments because like, we are, let's say we, we want to go a certain way and I'm just like, She's insisting that it's this way. And I'm like, oh my god, the Maxwell and Marty. Yeah. <laughs> the Maxwell and Marty. She's insisting oh, that it's this so way. Bad. And then I'm just like, I don't know how to tell you as politely as I can that you are wrong. Correct. I wouldn't say an argument, but it's just an awkward moment of like, ah, no, but isn't it that? And then he's like, no, pretty, it's really not. And then I'm like, no, but it's that one. <laughs> you know, I, I'm really serious. And then she's like doubling convinced. down, she's tripling yeah. down. And I'm just like, if we go the way that you're going, right, we are not going to get where we need to be yeah, yeah. at the right time. So I have to like, 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 put my foot down and be like, okay, I know you think that this is the way you, that you need to go, sure, but right now, you need to trust me, you need to follow me. No, but then sometimes, <laughs> if we've got time, right, we're not late, that shot, I'll be like, okay, okay, okay let's go, <laughs> let's go that. <laughs> then in a moment, I stretch again, like, okay, okay, means I'm wrong. <laughs> but the most recent one was at Maxwell MRT. Yes, my yeah. brain couldn't process the fact that when we approached Maxwell MRT, our train was no longer the, you know, when you enter a train on the, on the head of the train, and then by the time you reach Maxwell, you're actually at the tail. And then I, my brain couldn't process that because it opens at the other side. So I couldn't understand. I was like, huh, but shouldn't we walk to that end to go to our exit? And then Chuck's like, no, you're literally going to the opposite end. And I'm like, doesn't make and, sense and, to me. And, and, and I was late for work. So like, I really had to be like, look, you ne- I take this train like so many times. <laughs> yeah. Can you just follow me, please? Yeah, I really, my brain takes a while to process certain things. Okay, then, next. Yeah, okay. next one. Next question. Who is most likely to trip and fall in public? <laughs> okay. One, I've, two, three. Me. Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I have literally gotten in trouble with Pretty for laughing at her when she fell. Well, hurt my feelings. <laughs> yeah, this one. <laughs> Until now, she brings it up. I haven't in a while. Yeah. But, okay, la, this one, honestly. So, we were climbing up a staircase and then I was... We, we were having drinks la. before that it was, I was in such a good mood I was like yeah, yeah, yeah going home and then I was just happily running trotting and then I climbed out this style of staircase and I literally fell flat I tripped on the stairs I fell right on my like my face everything and, then, and from where I was standing it didn't look serious it just looked like <laughs> it was like a Oh, great hold and then she just plopped she was just like whoo ping yeah. and then I it was so cute and then I just like laughed like fuck. I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like you full on it. Then I was just there like, okay, I, I'm one of those losers that like my, my ego bruises is damn easy with this kind of thing. So like, in the moment, I'm like, I wouldn't say in general, I would say this kind of thing. It's like very, I hate it when people laugh at like, at like me falling 
happened before. I fell off a chair once in my own freaking home in, in like, back in Polly, like, 10 over years ago. But it was <laughs> a very old dining table chair that we moved, like, for 10 times. So it was, like, all the screw loose. <laughs> Sounds like me. But anyway, so I fell, I literally fell off that chair and my friend just sat there laughing for like a good two minutes. This is the same friend that laughed at me when I rode a bike and I smashed my face on the railing and I bruised my whole face. So what hurt my feelings. So I very triggered. I didn't laugh for two minutes. I chuckled for about 10 seconds and immediately went to go and help her. Yeah. And then I I damn sad. Like I I took it I took the help, but I was like, yeah, she was dead. Yeah, then then the whole time I was just confused. I was just like, ah, Okay, sorry, sorry. And then uh-huh. then we then like a couple of hours later I saw how bad the bruise was. The bruise was and then I felt like shit. Yeah, but I think for me I was more upset with the laugh than the pain of the fall. No, because, but it was so it was so cartoon esque. The way that oh, you fell. The word cartoon triggers me. Ayo. And I realized that I've had the, I've had a pattern la, of being either some level of bullied or made fun of growing up that Anyone laughing at me for doing something that is genuinely like, oh, I didn't know, or like, oh, I can't help, I can't, I can't prevent these things from happening, like falling through like a chair that's old, you know, like, f- like little things like that. They're like, I couldn't have predicted this one. Then when someone laughs, I get so triggered because I'm like, I feel very, I feel like a fool, uh, and I feel like that happens when you've been bullied growing up. That's a th- that's the thing that could be a very big trigger, but. But yeah, I'm try- I feel like I'm trying my best to, to get better at it and laugh at myself quicker. Because I can laugh at myself in hindsight. But I really need that moment to be over. And then I start making the jokes about it. I'm like, okay, free reign. We can all laugh at it. But, <laughs> but yeah, I laughed. But, but I laughed because I, was, I have been <laughs> the kid that has fallen. Yeah. And I have had friends that will fall. And we all just laugh. That was yeah. the culture. Yeah, yeah. You laugh first was- and then you help. Yeah. Yeah. Correct, correct. I, I understand that now. So I guess the next time I fall... <laughs> next question! You know how funny it is? Because right before filming oh. this episode, I told Kaying about how I tripped <laughs> I tripped on someone. On someone! <laughs> on Friday A night. A whole ass person. His foot lah. And then he's like the fucking... The, he's like the founder of the company. I was at the grand opening. Uh, <laughs> it was so embarrassing. And then I turned around thinking that, oh, this man is going to like be rolling his eyes or frowning at me or something and then he was so kind he was so kind he was like I'm so sorry and then I'm like okay actually my fault <laughs> but thank you <laughs> you know it was it was very kind but yeah I'm very clumsy I also la. okay next question imagine you guys are in school who is most likely to get detention <laughs> one two three me <laughs> yeah have you gotten detention before you actually damn Wow, shark them nerdies here in school. <laughs> 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 He's student counselor, prefect, all of those things. Yeah, I was just one of those pe- part of people at school who really wanted to be one of them, <laughs> but I actually cannot detention before. I actually no. Yeah, I don't think. I never got detention, but I got other things that I really don't want to talk about. Okay, can no problem. I like the vice principal called my mom to the office. You don't talk about it. I know lah, but <laughs> but I and I'm not going to. Yeah, but yeah. I've never gotten detention yeah. because the whatever trouble that I got in was quiet. Right, I forgot what kind of trouble I got into, but my class was chaos, and it's always some level of make the relief teacher cry or like doesn't mean I necessarily am the one uh, the antagonizer, uh, but I was always some level of just laughing at at like. Oh, I love it, people. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I was just about to bring that up. Yeah. No, but I feel like... Okay, like, I don't know. I can't remember exactly why I have been to detention, but I definitely have. And yeah, it wasn't like weird. It wasn't like... like Yeah, it was pretty normal. It was pretty normal for like people from my class to go to detention because we were a very chaotic bunch. But my nothing malicious. Nothing like insanely malicious. Or my school... I probably didn't go to detention because my school did not believe in detention because the stuff that was happening... Detention was just like uh, we are gathering all the naughty people together. <laughs> it is just putting gasoline on yeah, fire. Okay. Like so, they dealt with it different ways. Um, so, so in that sense, no I never went for detention. I kind of kicked oh. out of my class before they were. Oh, why? Yeah, you play basketball. I la? think I thought <laughs> <laughs> they want my school celebrate <laughs> my secondary school. Wow, happy you basketballer. But um, I think just because I thought in class or something stupid like there. Then Mr. Lo, my teacher, kicked me out of class. Well, you docked your teachers, yeah. My teacher, <laughs> he kicked me out of class, yeah. But no, I loved him. He was my form teacher. 
Shout out Newton Secondary School. Okay. <laughs> okay, next question. Who is most likely to have their phone run out of battery during the day? One, two, three. Pretty. Me. I mean, it's what I do. <laughs> like, I, I use my phone all the time. I, and, and I don't. I run out of memory, la, run out of battery, la, run out of every, anything you can think memory, of. Memory, battery, you run out of screen time. <laughs> that That's a thing you cannot run out of. Huh? I mean, if I set a ridiculous amount. No, if your phone dies, you run out of screen time. What? I guess. But yes, okay, I use my phone a lot. Next question. Who is most likely to get a tattoo? Wow. <laughs> This one tricky because my views on tattoos have shifted. Mm. Yeah. Three, two, one. Me. Pretty. Uh, but we have talked about this and actually... We I have, would probably still do it. Yeah. I would probably still do it. But I mean, I, I've always wanted to. I just feel like I've never... I don't feel committed to anything enough to put my body permanently yet. But when I when I think of a very solid design, I'll do it. Uh. And for me, it is... Uh, uh, it's quite... Uh, Ah, yeah, it's a long topic lah. <laughs> and I really don't think that y'all care about this enough hey, lah. Okay, if y'all care, then let us know, I guess. If y'all care, y'all see me around, ask me why, I, why I'm thinking two times about getting tattoos. And I'll explain. Okay, next one. Last one. So this is a deeper one. Um, what assumption about me that you made turned out to be true? So what assumption did we make about each other that ended up being true? Hmm. Well, I don't know eh. I feel like okay lah, this one gonna sound very obnoxious, but I feel like everything that I thought about like that you presented to me when we first interacted and stuff, I feel like it's been very consistent and I don't think anything has changed drastically or like or like I made any assumption that was way off. I just think that Okay lah, you you are exactly how you came across to me the first time we first few times we interacted eh. So I can't think of anything. Let me let me try. Mine is that she has trouble letting go. And it's true. Like I'm not I'm not talking about like anything in specific. I'm just talking about like in general, when it comes to letting things go, uh pretty struggles a bit. And not in a bad way. Sometimes it's warranted, sometimes it, that's your journey. Um but I am quicker to let things go than her. And I'm not talking about like our own personal like I'm talking about like if let's say like life in general. Like a bird sh- if a bird <laughs> shit on her shirt. Right? And then she'd be like, wow. Like at, at 8 o'clock, let's say the bird shit on her shirt in the afternoon. At 8 o'clock, she'd be like, wow, fuck, yeah, the bird shit on me. Yeah. yeah. And then I'd be like, can you, it, it happened already. Let it go. Yeah, I'm very, very. Shirt clean already. I'm so pessimistic. It's ridiculous. Like, it's really bad. She will make plans for the next bird to, to shit on her. Yeah. Like, I'll have a, I'll go and invent some shield for bird shit already. But I'll just be like, do Hey, yo. <laughs> That's called an umbrella, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> I don't know. I, I guess my... <laughs> that was one of the first few. Because I remember, yeah. like, we talked about that. There's like... Uh, oh, yo. <laughs> <laughs> he disappointed. So. Not disappointed. No, I was just like... It will take some time. Yeah. No, yeah. it takes me a while. And I, I really harp on, like... It's very difficult for me to to remember all the good things around me in a, in a moment of like stress or negativity in general. It's so difficult. And then I feel like that has been... I mean, Shark has obviously constantly tried to remind me like, of all the silver linings in a moment or like all the things that I did manage to achieve if like I didn't, if something went wrong, you know? So so yeah, that has been helpful. But yeah, I really struggle with that. To, yeah. me, to me, life is garbage. And if you don't hold on to the silver linings, then... It's hard lah. It's hard to make it to the next day. You need to hold on to the silver linings. What assumption did I make about you that ended up being true? That I'm a... I'm a... Fuck, what? I'm a fuck ton of fun. <laughs> you would say anything like that. But... Actually, I guess... Actually, I don't know lah. Sometimes I'm not lah. Oh my god. Shark's uh, dating app bio said something along the lines <laughs> of... I try I try not to step on ants. I still don't. Yeah. And he... The one really... He I, really I never, until today, will save ants. Yeah. Correct. Not like, just ants. I'll save anything. Yeah. But like... Like, ends. if it's, like, I guess a normal person would think, like, it's annoying if there's a trail of ends in your life. And then you'll be like, oh, then you want to, like, just I get li- rid of it. I've, I've literally shoved, shoved her yes, yes, to shoved save ends. Yes, you shoved me ends. before when I, when I naturally reflex, almost try and, like, 
shove my hand lah, okay, not some <laughs> like like shove me on the floor type shit. But like I think my reflex was just to like, oh, what's this? You know, then like want to flick like a tiny like ant or something. Then I'll catch your hand. And then he would just be like, eh, <laughs> you're like, oh no, oh no, I'm fight for the ants, right? And I'm like, that's true, that's true. No, sorry. We're, we're all alive. Yeah. We're right. all alive. But I guess considering that was something that was one of the first few things that I came across, right? Your bio, especially on dating app. It has been quite consistent, lah. Like the assumption that he's a genuinely nice person and a kind person has has obviously been Sometimes true. Sometimes I'm not. Yeah, if it's it's warranted, lah. If you're not, you know, I don't think it's a irrational, like anyhow, unkind to people. You're never, yeah, you're never like that. If even if it's warranted, I feel like you struggle to do that a lot, and I have to be like the. Come on, man! Like, come on, man! Like, this one you getting taken advantage of. This one, people, people like really just abusing the fact that you're so kind. So, yeah. So I would like to think the way Shark is there for me when I need to be way more optimistic or at least look at silver linings. I would like to think that I am also able to be there when, when shit like that happens, lah. You know, when I think that you're just being taken advantage of, and I'm not gonna allow that to happen. <laughs> I also feel I need to caveat this. I am not a positive person. Yeah. It was a it was a lot of practice, and it is still practice. And meditation. Yeah, yeah, lah. I meditate, lah. <laughs> Just now, Kai asked me to sit like this, yeah. Then I said, "You think what? I meditate?" <laughs> <laughs> so Shark meditates a lot. I don't know about a lot. I meditate. Okay, to a normal human being who doesn't really do it a lot, or at all, <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. An hour a day is a lot. Okay. Um. Now we uh we've come to the part of the show. I'm just gonna ask random questions. Yes. Would you rather questions? If me and Taylor Swift were stuck on a cliff at the Grand Canyon, right? Both of us struggling, and like it would take you the same amount of time to run to me or run to Taylor Swift. You it involves running. <laughs> okay, okay, go on, go on. Sorry. Okay, we can change the no, parameters okay, okay. Hopping, to hopping. to whatever lah. <laughs> okay, go on, go on, go on. I'm equidistant, yes. equidistant. Yes. Whatever mode of transport you decide to take. Uh, you can only save one person, okay. and both of us have only enough grip strength to stay <laughs> there at the same amount of time, right? <laughs> Who are you saving? Well, I already have a gun pointed at one of your hands. <laughs> so okay, I okay. should do pull-ups. I mean, okay, realistically, right? I will weigh the cost-benefit analysis of this situation, and <laughs> Damn. okay, la, come on, la. Realistically, if I want to think of the great. Like the greater good of the world, right? <laughs> you will save Taylor Swift. If I want to think of the greater good of the world, but do I? <laughs> okay, I would say considering the amount of joy that Taylor has brought, the amount of people she has, then obviously the like politically correct answer. <laughs> like, We're not looking for that. We're looking for the answer. Actually, that's not true. Politically correct answer is, is I pick you. <laughs> really? What kind of heartless... Heathen am I? No, no, no. See, okay. if you if you trust your partner enough to be able to get themselves out of that situation, no, I trust Taylor Swift that she'll be able to get out of that situation. I'll I, save you. I'd rather take my chances trying to save you, even if you don't need my help. Then Taylor you Swift, are no. literally like top one percent of like zero point, zero zero point don't know how many percent like highest listener. Yeah, but like, who do I want to? Just spend all my days with and all my life with, and yeah, and and and, and there is I mean, more. It's, the answer is you. I want to spend all the time with you, and I want Taylor Swift playing in the background. So I think her songs will live on. <laughs> wow. I'm so sorry, everybody. He put a gun to my. Head. I did no such thing. If anything, the gun was at my head. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay. Next question. You have to think yourself, ah. Uh. Difficult, difficult. Okay, my turn again. Yes. If you were stuck in a cage with a tiger, huh? and Richard Parker, I never watched the movie. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry to all the Indians. Um, you uh, would you rather be in a cage with a tiger that is very hungry, or in a cage with a man? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm big tiger. <laughs> <laughs> you, I tell you already. I don't look at men. I hate men. I tell you how many times. Oh my god! Do you know the amount of times throughout our entire relationship that Shark would just ask me something about a random friend, a mutual friend, or just a male friend, and then I'll just look at him dead ass, like dead in the eye, and I'll be like, 
you why do you think I look at men? Like, do you actually think I know the answer to your question? I'm I don't look at men. If they look good, no, or but whatever, it will be something you know? like, hey, did you see this person was doing that? I'll be like, I don't pay attention to men. Like, I don't know how to explain this to you, but I cannot. Like, wow, it's it's a it's really a thing. Like that that exact sentence has come up at least ten times in the last year. <laughs> it's a lot. I don't pay attention. But yes, I'd rather be trying to catch with a tiger. As long as you, I guess, give me hungry some, tiger, you know. Then just give me some ingredients I cook for the tiger. <laughs> 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 okay, sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we can arrange that. Yeah. yeah. How about you? You pick the man, right? What? Yeah, the tiger isn't going to eat me. I can, I can like fuck up the man. Who say the man not going to eat you? Anyways, if you could create any festival, uh, in the world. You had there's no, there's no budget issues. There's no, nothing. There's no issues, right? Like venue, all have that kind of thing. What kind of show would you put up? Wow. Wow. I mean, if there's no budget or anything, I guess. I as in no budget, as in you have all the budget. Oh yeah, yeah. You get I me. Mean? Everybody as gets no paid. Restrictions. Yeah. Everybody gets paid brilliantly. All the licenses you can get. Wow. Venue is fine. Then I guess I would bring in. I would want to do like a big ass music festival in Singapore and bring in every artist that, that like, we have resigned to the fate that they might never come to Singapore. You know, like people that are going to be so insanely expensive to watch, and I'll make the tickets like five dollar. Yeah. <laughs> but then all the artists get paid their rates. Correct. <laughs> but correct. Then, but then the the we all like super super cheap. Like just need to just need to pay pay as you wish. Ah, pay as you wish. Pay as you wish. Yeah. So we do something like that, and then I bring in. All you better pay, ah. Uh, pay as you wish. You yeah. got money, you better pay, ah. Uh. You better wish that you have to pay and then you better pay. So, um... If you got no money, get a free ticket and pay for it. If you got no money, then I, I pay, help you pay $1, you know? Anyways, it's my festival anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I can give out all the free tickets. But bring in, like, all the... Wow, I want to bring in everybody from, like, the era of music we grew up with. So, like, the the 2000s, you know, like, bring in Destiny's Child and bring Damn. in, like, you know, everything, everybody that we, we don't really think they will ever come to Singapore or, like, if we ever see them together again, it has to be something. I really don't think Beyonce will ever come to Singapore. No, so. I think she might bring Renaissance to Singapore. She might. But, it'll be the last leg of the tour, like, it won't be anytime soon. It'll be like, like how Taylor, you know, is keeping international dates for the last one. So, yeah, I think, yeah, Beyonce, like Nelly, Usher, wow. you know, like that kind, like wow, like a night that the millennials, Griselda. the yeah, a night that we would just have so much fun, and then different genres, different stages for different genres. So if it's like R and B, hip hop, then it's like one section. Then if you like heavy metal, you know, then there's a whole other section. Yeah. Like that It'll would be, be so fun. Different genres at a music festival. Oh is my god, has Creator ever come to Singapore? I don't know what that is. But I'll bring them for my festival. Wow, <laughs> Ken. Now that we've finished playing all the How Well We Know Each Other, Would You Rather games, it is time to end this episode. So goodbye, everybody. Bye. But ring, 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 ring. Hey, hello, hello. The phone ringing, the phone ringing. Pick up, quick. Ring, ring. Miss Naya, here you go. Oh. Hello. It is time for... My favorite part of the show, your unsolicited advice of the week. <laughs> so my advice is, hold on, uh, uh, let me pass the phone to Shah. Be kind, even when it doesn't make sense. And don't be a dick. Like it's so easy. And don't step on ends. And don't step on ends. Just be kind and pay it forward. Always pay it forward. And that's. How you get the girl. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, all that in general, of course. But that's how he won the girl. I'm not priced. Okay, anyways. Exactly. I'm just wily. Okay, so my answer is that advice is, sometimes your boyfriend will laugh at you when you fall down. <laughs> and, and that's just a reminder that sometimes you need to learn to laugh at yourself. So, he might hurt in the moment. <laughs> But it's okay. It's a moment. <laughs> it won't last for a lifetime. Unless you make it last for a lifetime, you see? So actually now, I can laugh at myself. And I can laugh at how I fell down that day like a loser <laughs> trotting up staircase. But at least I was cute. And at Very. least... Okay, okay. Anyways. So yeah, learn to laugh at yourself because it'll just make you happier in general. And I'm such a pessimist. I need to take my own advice. <laughs> Hello? Hello! Oh, sorry. Oh. 
So that was your unsolicited advice of the week. Hello? It's not ringing, man. That was your unsolicited advice of the week. We hope you enjoyed this episode and happy three year anniversary. Woo! Okay, love you. Love Bye. You too. <laughs>